Moses is dead. But before his death, Moses asked God to let Joshua be his successor. With God's consent, Joshua was appointed the leader of the people of Israel. The task assigned to him was not easy, he had to bring Israel into the land and lead an army that would fight against seven nations. His important war to conquer the land went through the city of Jericho. So, what is so special about Jericho that Joshua sent spies to investigate it? Jericho is the most beautiful city in the Jordan Valley, with great strategic importance. It also has many date trees and water channels from Wadi Kelt Springs running through it. Before the conquest of Jericho, a mysterious angel appeared to Joshua, the same angel that Moses had refused to receive guidance from. What the angel had to say to Joshua will be revealed later. Then Joshua son of Nun secretly sent two spies from Shittim. Go, look over the land, he said, especially Jericho. So they went and entered the house of a prostitute named Rahab and stayed there, Joshua 2 verse 1. Joshua sent a small, efficient, and secret delegation to Jericho, giving his spies brief instructions, go, look over the land. This was a short mission, lasting only three days. The spies had no time to linger, the people had already received the order to prepare to cross the Jordan River in three days. Rahab helped the spies by providing them lodging during their mission to bring back information from Jericho. Rahab provided a safe haven for spies in Jericho, despite her king's orders. She demonstrated remarkable courage by putting her own safety at risk to protect those in need. So the king of Jericho sent this message to Rahab, Bring out the men who came to you and entered your house, because they have come to spy out the whole land. Joshua 2 verse 3 Rahab hid the spies and told the people of Jericho that they were on their way back. The people chased the spies towards the Jordan, while Rahab sent the spies in the opposite direction, to the mountains west of the city. Before the spies left Jericho, Rahab explained the reasons for her actions, which was enough for them to know that they had accomplished their mission. Now they can report to Joshua and give him news that any army preparing for an attack would be glad to hear. Joshua 2 verses 9 to 11 And said to them, I know that the Lord has given you this land and that a great fear of you has fallen on us, so that all who live in this country are melting in fear because of you. We have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea for you when you came out of Egypt, and what you did to Sion and O.G., the two kings of the Amorites east of the Jordan, whom you completely destroyed. When we heard of it, our hearts melted in fear and everyone's courage failed because of you, for the Lord your God is God in heaven above and on the earth below. Furthermore, Rahab makes a personal plea. She wants to save herself and her family. Realizing that the war is hopeless and thus striving to save whatever she can. Joshua 2 verses 12 to 13 Now then, please swear to me by the Lord that you will show kindness to my family, because I have shown kindness to you. Give me a sure sign. That you will spare the lives of my father and mother, my brothers and sisters, and all who belong to them, and that you will save us from death. After three days, the spies returned to Joshua and informed him. Joshua 2 verse 24 They said to Joshua, The Lord has surely given the whole land into our hands, all the people are melting in fear because of us. We can understand what Joshua wanted to know from the spy's answer. About the morale of the people of Jericho. Were the men of the fortified and strong Jericho ready to fight, or were they frightened and despairing? The spies returned the answer that Joshua was waiting for. All the people are melting in fear because of us. The first and most important step has been achieved. There will be no war against an enemy who is fighting with all his strength and faith in his victory. Before them is a frightened enemy. Before the battle of Jericho, 
Joshua was instructed by God's angel, preparing the Israelites for what was to come. Joshua 5 verses 13 to 15 Now when Joshua was near Jericho, he looked up and saw a man standing in front of him with a drawn sword in his hand. Joshua went up to him and asked, Are you for us or for our enemies? Neither, he replied, but as commander of the army of the Lord I have now come. Then Joshua fell face down to the ground in reverence, and asked him, What message does my Lord have for his servant? The commander of the Lord's army replied, Take off your sandals, for the place where you are standing is holy. And Joshua did so. The description of the angelic encounter is difficult to understand, so we need to go back to the cases of Moses in order to comprehend the revelation given to Joshua before the battle of Jericho. While Moses was tending the flock of his father-in-law Jethro in Midian, he went to the desert and saw the burning bush. He went to investigate why the bush was not being consumed, and he heard an angel telling him the same things that Joshua later heard. Exodus 3 verses 5 to 6 Do not come any closer, God said. Take off your sandals, for the place where you are standing is holy ground. Then he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob. At this, Moses hid his face, because he was afraid to look at God. Both Moses and Joshua received angelic guidance to succeed in their mission. For Moses, it was to guide Israel out of Egypt, and for Joshua, it was to lead them into their rightful inheritance in the land. With divine support and wisdom, they both successfully fulfilled their tasks. Both meet an angel, both take their sandals off their feet when they see the angel, and both are afraid of the angel. Moses hides his face, and Joshua falls on his face. He realizes that he is only a man and just a messenger and that he must fulfill the orders that will be placed upon him. This is one explanation for the angel case, however, it is possible to understand the meeting with the angel in a deeper way, as a continuation of the conversation between Moses and God after the sin of the calf. Exodus 32 verses 31 to 34. So Moses went back to the Lord and said, Oh, what a great sin these people have committed. They have made themselves gods of gold. But now, please forgive their sin, but if not, then blot me out of the book you have written. The Lord replied to Moses, Whoever has sinned against me I will blot out of my book. Now go, lead the people to the place I spoke of, and my angel will go before you. However, when the time comes for me to punish, I will punish them for their sin. After the sin of the calf, a decree of destruction was almost issued to the Israelites, but Moses managed to cancel the decree. The punishment was less, whoever has sinned against me, I will blot out of my book, a punishment for those who worship the calf, and another punishment, behold, my angel will go before you. This punishment changes the way in which God leads Israel, shifting from leadership in which God is the leader to one led by an angel. What is the difference between leadership by God and leadership by an angel? One of the Jewish commentators explains that the difference between the action of God and the action of the angel is like the difference between leadership in miracles and natural leadership, which follows the laws of nature. If we go by this distinction, then the punishment that the Israelites receive after worshipping the calf is that their leadership will naturally be without any more miracles or changes in the order of nature on their way to the land of Israel. However, Moses did not agree to this punishment, and he stated. Then Moses said to him, If your presence does not go with us, do not send us up from here. Exodus 33 verse 15 and again. He said, Lord, he said, if I have found favor in your eyes, then let the Lord go with us. Exodus 34 verse 9. Indeed, God accepted Moses' request, and on the way to the promised land, he led the Israelites and performed many miracles during their time in the desert. 
Returning to Joshua, the Israelites entered the land and, as soon as they did, the miracles that had accompanied them for forty years stopped, the manna, the bread from the sky that rained down on them for forty years, stopped coming. The Israelites began to eat the grain of the land, just like any other humans. There was one miracle when the Jordan was parted. There will be a few more miracles during the occupation of the land but is different now. No longer are there miracles every day. And no longer is God leading Israel without considering the laws of nature. Now the conversation takes on meaning, the angel said to Joshua. I wanted to come to Israel to inherit the land in the days of Moses, but he rejected me. Moses wanted the leadership to be experimental, directly from God. From now on, the leadership will be mostly natural. Wars will be fought by soldiers, according to military principles and war tactics. From now on, the people of Israel must live according to the laws of nature. And will no longer see miracles that change the order of nature. The angel who appeared to Moses began the process of redemption through miracles. While the angel who appeared to Joshua initiated the process of redemption without miracles. And yet, the story of the first conquest within the territory of the land of Israel joins the chain of miracles that has accompanied the people of Israel since their exodus from Egypt. The description of the fortified city of Jericho closed and there is no going out and no going in increases the sense of the miracle of its conquest. Chapter 6 of the book of Joshua describes in great detail the divine plan and the instructions given to Joshua. To circle the city once every day for six days. With the priests carrying the jubilee trumpets in front of the Ark of the Covenant. On the seventh day, they circled the city seven times while blowing trumpets and cheering the people. And so it happened on the seventh day. Joshua 6 verse 20. When the trumpet sounded, the army shouted, and at the sound of the trumpet, when the men gave a loud shout, the wall collapsed, so everyone charged straight in, and they took the city. Jericho was destroyed and burned with fire, its inhabitants and animals were confiscated, and its silver, gold, and metal vessels were given to the treasury of God's house. Rahab and her family members were spared from death due to the promise the spies gave her. Then comes Joshua's curse on the city. Joshua 6 verse 26. At that time Joshua pronounced this solemn oath, Cursed before the Lord is the one who undertakes to rebuild this city, Jericho. At the cost of his firstborn son, he will lay its foundations, at the cost of his youngest he will set up its gates. Many scholars have seen the story of the conquest of Jericho as a reflection in reverse of the story of creation, for example. The six days of creation ended with a day of rest, compared to the six days of non-action, followed by action on the seventh day. The creation story featured the creation of all creatures, while the story of Jericho depicted their complete extinction. The creation story ends with a blessing, while the story of Jericho ends with a curse. The parallel to the story of creation emphasizes the divine involvement and the miracle of the conquest of Jericho, which is comparable to the creation of the world. After Joshua's death, no leader arose to take his place. The people were instead led by the elders, followed by the judges. We hope you learned something new today. If you did, Give this video a like and share it with your friends. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more informative and entertaining content. See you next time.